Yeah, this is Peter Cimarroni for BVS Film Productions Com Talk, and I'm here with Mike Smith from Alexis Exhibits. Mike, talk a little bit about the status of the industry and what's happening out there. Well, um, it's a lot of people ask me that question. It's very hard to identify because the exhibit and event industry spans so many different um, industries sure. that it's... Uh, you know, some like the medical side of things sure. takes a path on its own. Yeah. Um, this year, for example, there's the International Machine Tool Show, which happens every okay. two years. All right. Which is a hugely attended international show. Sure. Every year, the biggest show is Consumer Electronics in Las Vegas, and that's experienced an amazing resurgence um, post pandemic. Yeah. Um, but there are other shows. Uh, we sure. serve a lot of clients in the dental industry. Yeah. And that industry really did not recover to the degree that it was pre-pandemic. Sure. Uh, consequently, um, companies like ours find success in diversification. Yeah. Because if you're stuck in one area, uh, sure. for example, automotive shows, there used to be 65 shows in the span of about three months. Wow. Uh, domestically. Yeah. And that has not really recovered to the degree that it was Sure. So, so you've had to be creative, you've yes. had to be innovative, and you've also had to pivot a lot, right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So, so what is your what is your pre show strategy? Some, you know, you really have to lay the foundation out before you get into these shows today because of the situation that happened with the pandemic. Yeah. I, I well, I think um, from a client standpoint, yeah, uh, very few clients do it effectively in terms of pre show planning and setting goals and things like that. That if it's done right, right can be a huge benefit and a huge contributor to a, a company's marketing sure. and sales. Um, so do you consult with that? I mean, obviously, do you direct them? Love to. Sure. Love yeah. to. Yeah. Um, that's one of my favorite things to do. The unfortunate thing is uh, top management usually doesn't want to get down in the trenches right. In, right. in trade show exhibit design and uh, production, things like that. But um, even that little nuance can make a difference, right? Oh, yeah, huge. a little tweak here or there, right? Uh, some of our smaller clients, the sure. smaller companies where we are directly working with the owners or uh, top management, um, it's very effective because they're so much more bottom line accountable, right? That they got to, you know, for whatever they're investing in the show, they have to be assured that they're going to get a return on that investment, and then the strategy side of it and the planning side of it becomes critical. Yeah. to achieving that. Is there any any kind of example, case study that really kind of step, you know, strikes you and, and, and is in the forefront of your mind as to something that was a success about something like that? Well, I mean, there's some uh, amazing things that can be done. Um, one of my favorites was people uh, constantly say, because trade shows are very expensive, Yes, they are. Um, from all aspects, of course. from the space time, to the, yes, money, the staff, yeah. the travel, <laughs> emotion. The yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. I mean, undoubtedly, it's a huge expense, and sure. it's ROI is what everybody's focuses on, sure. and it's very difficult to attach. But a couple of examples I used to do years ago. I was uh, handled the account uh, Libby Glass sure. or Glassware. Yeah, right out of Toledo, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's where I started uh, my. Life actually sure, yeah. <laughs> I was born there and raised. Yeah, but um, we we served them and they did a show called the Premium and Incentive Show, which I think has probably morphed into different things. Sure, but basically it was uh, to show uh, companies things that they could use from on a promotional basis. Sure, and they this was the year that they came out with the Uncola glass. Okay, and All if right. you recall, the traditional Coke glass was upside down, mm -hmm. and it was marketed as the Uncola glass, mm -hmm. and they they took orders on the show floor for like millions of gross wow. of these glasses. Wow. Because companies like Burger King or McDonald's, sure. or, um, at that time, these promotional items were just yeah. you know going crazy. Yeah. And the, the numbers they turned were just just unbelievable. Um, so that I think that's a good one just from a product driving it. Uh, from an actual performance standpoint i think my favorite one was it was a company called akuma a japanese company in the machine okay. tool business yeah and i did their booth staff training and it was in a very authoritative let's say booth staff training where okay. everyone in the room no one made a noise and All listened right. to the presenters All right. which was nice being a presenter actually yeah, that's right. yeah but um 
but the CEO was there. Oh, wow. And uh, that person made it clear that their goal was to write orders for 200 machines wow. on the show floor. Yeah. And they had strategies and processes in place. Sure that made that happen they very actually japanese. did do it very japanese yes yes, yes. very uh, disciplined, disciplined. Mm -hmm. but i learned so much in listening to how they managed that side of it yeah. and how effective that could be because these machines were not little machines these no. were million dollar machines so it was not easy to do gotcha but there again the venue was in chicago and the and every two years people come and as most people know they people go to trade shows. Is that the McCormick Center? Yes. Yes. Beautiful, crazy oh, yeah. facility. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to go there again. I, I, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, but um, they uh, uh, every two years, and people come to see what's new. Yeah. Well, in that show, it's yeah. it's so important because that's where they see what's new. Well, then that that kind of leads me to the next question. At the show, what are the, what's what are some of the you know strategies that you consult and and direct and mentor uh, for your clients? Well, most of our time is spent in designing and producing the exhibit. Okay, um, and that obviously is a is a critical thing. Um, sure, a beautiful exhibit it creates an environment. Yeah, where attendees are uh, educated and. Uh, made to feel comfortable, yeah. and a teamwork ethic is is um, usually the goal. That's beautiful. And, I like um, that. Yeah, everything works in you know together. Yeah, in, in concert. Yes. Yes. But uh, staff, the pe people staffing the exhibit, mm -hmm. um, their abilities will yes. dramatically impact the results of of the show. Okay. And um, few companies do well. They um, with all due respect, they send their most arrogant sure. salespeople. Okay. okay. And these salespeople are not necessarily as diligent as they should be okay. in following the protocols. Um, the, the, right. The yeah. marketing plan yeah. that had been set forth. Sure, sure. And so that's. that's Which is well thought of, out. Yeah. You know, and the cavalier nature of that tends to not work well with right. you know, the, the plan, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and in many cases, I recommended that they, that the clients, uh, avoid sending salespeople or augment the sales force. That's really good advice. With inside, yeah. with inside salespeople sure. who, number one, oh, I get to travel to Chicago. Yeah. Well, salespeople don't. So there's react gratitude like that. there. Yes, actually, and there's actually internal. some incentive. Yes. Right? yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a key element. And then they are also trainable and manageable. Sure. So you tell them when somebody enters the exhibit, you introduce yourself. You do this. You do that. And usually, what we try to do is is design an exhibit that has a flow. So that when an, a visitor that's unfamiliar with the cl yeah. client can be taken on a little journey, right? An, that's educationally logical, and as they come out, they uh, have that we have our best opportunity to record the lead and follow up and so on. Well, it's a good it's a good combination when they're a little hungry and also responsible. Yes. to the mission, right? But you that's know. really hard. I understand to yeah. uh, tell salespeople that there are. Yeah. They might not be the best people to talk, <laughs> especially when their biggest exactly. customers are going to be walking into the exhibit. Yeah, yeah. Or have maybe have a, a junior AE with them, yep. account executive or something like that, to, to follow up on all the protocol, if yep. you will. You know. So, And then post-show strategy. What is the best advice and, and some of the best advice that you could give or that you do consult to your clients with? Um, well, I think, I think it all revolves around top management involvement. Sure. Um, so whatever is going to happen to the leads that are gathered, right? Um, how they're going to be recorded, how they're going to be dispersed, how they're going to be followed up upon, and ultimately how uh, management is going to know what is happening so yeah. that their investment is is safeguarded. Yeah. Um, I can tell you that some of the major medical companies that we dealt with, more than once, we have, and companies will generally use portions of the same exhibit from year to year and modify it. Sure. Like that. We it do a lot sense, of that. Yeah. Well, um, more than one occasion, divisions of the, the biggest medical companies, yeah. we have gone, the, the subsequent year have gone into the display to get it ready for the next show. Yes. And found all the leads in a cabinet. Oh, no. Yeah. That's awful. Well, that's, 
yeah. unmanaged. I mean, yeah. that's kind of the way that it is. It's amazing that the United States yeah. is so successful financially with the, some of the lack of talent and just uh, incompetence. It's well, amazing. and comparing to um, European yeah. shows, uh, trade shows are much more valuable and and thought of and much more up. highly yeah. yeah yeah and they yeah. go on for two weeks sure, sure. and people um just the the way that their their business behavior is yeah. that this is where people buy things sure and the rest of the year they they run their business yeah um and so uh, it's much more serious um and it's when we when we have and we have so many clients that are headquartered offshore either, yeah um, okay east or west and um it's very hard to work with them to design an exhibit that works in the United States when they're thinking that people are going to come in to the booth, sit down, go in a conference room, and spend two hours getting to know everybody. Yeah. When in yeah. the United States, it's like a track meet in the aisles. Right. People right. are yeah. running down. Don't stop me. Give yeah. me a brochure. Do you know whatever? Yeah. Don't record my information. I don't want right. a lot of junk. But yeah, um, it's that transition makes it very hard for people to understand when they come here. gotcha so so if you know at the end you know of our of our calm talk mm -hmm. here at bvs we like to leave the audience with an you know some kind of nugget of inspiration or just good advice so mike let you know leave us with something that you would tell somebody that's gonna do and spend the kind of money that they're spending in a trade show so that it is effective Set goals. Awesome. Sit down well before the show. Yeah. Explain to all the members of your team why you spent the money to rent the space in the show before Brilliant. we even start talking about exhibits or anything yep. like that. So if it's we need to get uh, 100 leads or sure. whatever it is, or we need to close sales, whatever you think, whatever your thinking is, yeah. and then allow professionals like myself or like our company or yeah. uh, other meeting and planning people to use that as fuel for designing and producing the desired effect. Because yeah. without that, yeah. it's just, oh, well, that'll look nice over there. Or, Boy, or, we got to get our logo up there big, you know, or all these yeah, arbitrary yeah. kind of um, Really non-essential non things. Right. You need to really focus on what's the goal of vision yep. and the outcome, right? Yep. And if you do that, yeah. then, and then what that, what that fuels is the post-show meeting. Okay. Where two weeks after the show, those goals are brought out and set on the table. Right. And check, people say, check, how did we do? Check, how check, we do? or not, exactly. or not, or not, right, yeah. And yeah, I, yeah. I can tell you that yeah. there's very, very, very few people that I've worked with in almost 50 years in this business mm -hmm. that do that and do it well. Well, Guys, listen, guys and gals, listen to Mike Smith. I mean, this is great advice. These are nuggets that he's given you. So, Mike, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, Peter. Absolutely. This is uh, Peter Cimarroni for BVS Film Productions, Com Talk, Michael Smith, and Alexis Exhibits.